This video is going to be about how to do Key West on the cheap, right, babe? Almost free. Yeah, almost free, according to her. Welcome back. This week, we're going to show you how to travel to Key West on the cheap, but still get that Key West experience. Okay, so obviously our main mission is to have a lot of fun, but we set some goals for ourselves. Number one, spend zero dollars on hotel stays or Airbnb nights. Number two, keep the average fuel price as low as possible. Number three, spend minimal money on sightseeing. Also during this visit, we'll point out some tips, traps, misconceptions, as well as some general expectations versus reality when traveling and visiting Key West. A few facts about our trip before we begin. We will be traveling from North Carolina and we expect to drive just under a thousand miles one way. Now that will probably take us around 15 and a half hours depending on traffic. We'll be taking this trip in our 2019 Ford Transit camper van to avoid hotel stays and Airbnb nights. We're also leaving the week after Christmas and just before New Year's Eve, which is considered a busy period for the Keys. Let's go. First stop, Bucky's in Florence, South Carolina. Now, we know the fuel will be cheaper in South Carolina and Georgia and begin to increase in price as we move into Florida and the Keys. So we'll take advantage of using a combination of Costco cards, Circle K Easy Pay cards, and various apps to show us cheaper fuel stops along the way to help achieve our goal. Now don't mind if we have some brisket sandwich while we're here, okay? We stretch our legs a bit and we check out all the merchandise. I mean, if you've never been to a Bucky's, the place is quite amazing. Now I've never seen so much beaver merchandise in my entire life. Quite frankly, looking at the guy, he kind of resembles me. Jig Money gets a kick out of trying on all the different hats and uh, I kind of get a kick out of watching her too. Okay, enough playing around. Let's hit the road and head to our next stop. Our next destination, you guessed it, Bucky's in St. Augustine, Florida. That's right, folks, we're Bucky's hopping to South Florida. Fun fact about Bucky's, they don't permit 18 wheeler semi truck and trailers, so the store feels more like a tourist attraction than a truck stop. But this time, we're not refueling at the Bucky's. There's actually a Costco across the street that has gas. 10 cents cheaper. Now we just about had all the driving and riding that we can stand, especially in this traffic. So we're just gonna spend the night right here in the parking lot. The following morning, we head out toward our destination in South Miami and we're greeted with more I-95 traffic. We finally arrive in South Miami and this time we're refueling at another Costco. So far, we've been able to keep it below three bucks a gallon, right babe? Yes. Then we decided to grab some dinner before we headed to our final destination for the night. We make our way to our final resting spot for tonight, the Cracker Barrel in Florida City, Florida. Now this will be used as our staging area before we make a final push to Key West in the morning. A couple of tips here. Now we refueled in South Florida for a reason. The gas will get increasingly expensive as you head further toward Key West. So we have enough fuel in our tank to actually make it there and back. Another tip, drive it at night if you want to avoid the traffic. The traffic is usually heavy and slow out to Key West. But since this was G-Money's first time, we drove during daylight to soak up the views. The following morning, we head to Key West. This leads us to our first misconception of traveling out to Key West. The general misconception here is that you're gonna be driving on these expansive bridges the entire way and you're gonna have ocean views on both sides. The reality is you'll be traveling on land most of the time with trees obstructing your views from both sides. The experience is similar to traveling out to the Outer Banks in North Carolina or traveling out to Cape Cod in Massachusetts. On your way to Key West, there's plenty of opportunities to stop at some of the local shops, partake in various water activities, the fish jumping out there, or just take a leisurely walk on the old Seven Mile Bridge. But that's not what this video is about. There are plenty of YouTube videos out there already that show you what you can do while traveling to and visiting Key West. And this, ladies and gentlemen, leads us to our first trap. Mind your speed. It does change throughout the trip. You'll find plenty of decoy cop cars along the way to keep you guessing. 
As we enter Key West, there's a fork in the road. And here's our next tip. If you need to grab some groceries, take the north route on US-1. We took the south route on A1A Beachfront Avenue to find our parking spot at Higgs Memorial Beach Park. Now before we decided on Higgs Memorial Beach Park as our parking lot for the day, we actually checked out a variety of pay lots around town. Got these? Full right now. Full? Full. Okay. I can't park anywhere right there for the post office. Oh, okay. Can, can we can get, out, any, that can you get out that way? Can you okay. anyway parking? 411 Caroline Street. 411 Caroline, Caroline Street? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. No look at the post office pay lot. Let's go over to 411 Caroline Street as the man says. Yeah. How you doing? We have one spot with no way to fit in. Okay. You can look at it if you want, but you can't get in. Okay. Where is there uh, anywhere further out that you know of? I would say, have you already been by the post office? Yeah, that's where we just came from. Uh, all I would say other than that is, you know, try to drive the street. the street for city parking. We tried a couple of more pay parking lots. This one's on the corner of Margaret and Caroline Street. It's called the Bite Pay Parking Lot. And no luck there either. We ended up settling on Higgs Memorial Beach Park. You can see some free spaces on the side of the street there as well as in the parking lot. And this leads me to our next few tips around parking. Let's start with a simple tip. Get there early if you want the best parking spaces. The second tip is there are more available parking spaces on the street in the more residential areas. It becomes more difficult to park as you get closer to Duval Street, which is in the historic district and close to a lot of the action. Our third tip is just to utilize the parking at Higgins Memorial Beach Park. It seems to be way less busy. You can just ride or walk into the historic district. Point out on the map where Kokomo is. After enjoying the beach ocean life and wildlife, we had a problem to solve. Where were we going to stay for the night? I mean, after all, we had a hard time finding a place to park during the day. Higgs Memorial Beach Park was not an option. There are signs that literally say daytime parking only. Towing enforced. Unless you book way in advance, it's almost impossible to get a camping spot at one of the RV parks or state parks. And have you seen the prices at those private RV parks? Only in dire need. We took notice of where we saw other vans parking and we found an excellent spot right by the NOAA weather station. No signs to be found and just across the street from a Dairy Queen. Bingo! Also seems like this is a fairly quiet area. And those Key West roosters are going to be our personal alarm clock. And this leads me to the next tip, which is overnight parking. Take note of what other van campers are doing and try to fit in. So we're in Key West, we have a place to park, and we also have a place to spend the night for free. So what do we do now? Well, this leads me to our next tip. If you're visiting Key West, bring your walking legs, a bicycle, a golf cart, a scooter, whatever it may be, you're gonna need it. Bring your own to save on the exorbitant rental fees. Driving just doesn't cut it. It's a congested nightmare. Also, don't forget to bring a bike lock. We totally forgot ours. Some of the restaurants allowed us to actually take our bike upstairs and store them inside while we ate. And only a few short minutes ride, we were right in the middle of the historic district, Duval Street, and the waterfront. Those bikes allowed us to see everything we wanted to see in Key West. Soon after the Navy established a base in Key West in 1823, they knew they needed a lighthouse for maritime safety. It opened in 1848 with a woman as its first keeper. This little White House was used Obviously, by Harry Truman as a vacation home and served as his function in White House between 1946 and 1952. Famous novelist Ernest Hemingway lived and wrote in this house for nine years in the 1930s. We even headed over to the Truman Waterfront, home of the United States Coast Guard Maritime Museum. You could get some spectacular views of some cruise ships leaving and docking here, as well as a marketplace. You can view an old Civil War era fort and cannons at this park. This fort was named after U.S. President Zachary Taylor shortly after Florida became a state. Construction began in 1845. Just before sunset, head over to Mallory Square and the Sunset Pier. This is a popular open area used to view the sunset. You get magnificent views to the west here. And that leads me to expectations versus reality. If you have the expectation that you're going to be one of the few couples there viewing the sunset, having a nice cold drink peering out over the ocean, well, you'd be wrong. 
The reality is this is an extremely popular spot. Obviously, let's just say you won't be alone. You'll be there with hundreds or even thousands of tourists just like you. I bet you've seen pictures of this popular destination, the southernmost point in the USA. And I bet those pictures depicted a couple taking a selfie in front of the marker. Expectations versus reality. The reality is unless you have a great camera angle and somehow manage to get there in the middle of the night or the wee bits of the morning when no one else is there, your pictures are gonna look just like this. Do you feel like we're missing something? What about the beaches? Again, expectations versus reality. I would say Key West is more geared toward water sports. So if you're thinking about traveling to Key West just so you can lounge on some white sandy beaches with clear water, well, there's probably better beaches closer. Nonetheless, that shouldn't stop you from visiting Key West. It is a beautiful place. I'd venture to say almost magical. Okay, you know what time it is? It's time to check in and see how we did. Did we truly visit Key West on the cheap and still get the Key West experience? Or did we spin like mad buffoons and go bankrupt? And the survey says, no whammy, no whammy, stop. We stayed in a camper van every night. I know fuel cost is something that you can't entirely control, but I did put it in here because it was a fun challenge. The lowest price per gallon that we pumped was $2.59 and the highest was $3.09 which averaged out around $2.82 for the trip. Okay, we did not spend any money on admission fees or entry fees. Hey, we did say Key West on the cheap. However, we did eat dinner in Key West and also grabbed as a nice little sweet treat from the Dairy Queen. Couldn't pass it up. I should probably also mention that uh, we did take home a full key lime pie from the key lime pie factory. That's right. That's going to wrap this trip up. I hope you enjoyed the content. And just remember, everybody needs a plan B. Cha-cha for now.